This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. Donna Adelson saying bye-bye to her existing council and hello to a, a new council as the charges against her linger and the trial date is down the road on the charges of conspiring to murder her former son-in-law. The funny thing about this is, though, the new council isn't all that new. It's just not the state-appointed council. It's the same council that her son Charlie had, the same council that Charlie lost with. And now she's enlisting them to help her. Joining us to discuss, Eric Faddis, attorney. Is this weird? Is this common that, you know, it, it, I mean, it's not common, I guess, that you have a whole family that's being, you know, charged with conspiracy to murder someone. But let's say in a world where it is, when you you don't win, you, your son's going to jail for the rest of his life. Why would you hire his attorneys if it didn't work out the first time? This one is a bit of a head scratcher for me, Tony. I, I, I'm surprised because uh, for, for a number of reasons. Um, now, now, on the one hand, the, uh, the the sons, Charlie Adelson's prior attorneys, they know the case really well, right? That, that they, they've reviewed all the evidence already. They're up to speed, so that's mm -hmm. helpful. But on the other hand, they lost one. Yeah. And two, um, it, it makes me think there could be a conflict that arises. You know, perhaps in looking at Donna's case, her best legal out is to blame the son, Charlie, who's already in custody. That guy's in prison forever. Let, let him take the rap. And, and you'd be surprised, even in these family matters, uh, there, there are disputes like that that happen. So I'd be surprised. I'd be shocked that the underlying Charlie and Adelson's counsel would not have a conflict uh, in terms of how they can best represent the mother, Donna Adelson, and whether that would require blaming Charlie, their former client. Is there any possibility that they've retained this attorney again uh, to protect anyone? And of course, I'm, I'm pointing more towards Wendy. Did, did anything come out? Could anything have come out? I'm just kind of asking a logistical question here of, you know, when attorney-client privilege, having conversations all this time about the case, could there have been something that came out behind closed doors, never saw it to trial, about Wendy, about her possible involvement in this? Obviously, she's not charged with anything, never has been, completely innocent as far as we know. Uh, but uh, could that be a... a uh, basically a loose string on this if they didn't retain that attorney could could that if something did come out in theory uh behind closed doors and he's not the attorney on round two could he be subpoenaed could could any of those conversations come out in a new trial or in any sort of investigation is my question yeah it's tough because you know anytime a defendant hires an attorney they have the privilege, right? Yeah. They, they have confidentiality, but that doesn't necessarily apply to uh, anybody else. And it doesn't necessarily apply to all of the information that is presented to the attorney. So could Donna, the mother, um, you know, avail herself or at least access some information that we might not know about that, that, that the defense on the underlying case may have only known? It's possible, but it really gets murky ethically at that point for the yeah. attorney. And so um, that attorney is in a really tough spot in terms of, oh, should I tell Donna this, this thing that could help her case but could hurt Charlie's appeal? That That's the tension that, that, that could arise with this bizarre um, representation of the mother. Let's uh, play psychic for a moment because uh, this case obviously continuing to involve the investigation continues to go on into Donna. There's other people in this family. There's Donna's husband, and there's also Wendy. Uh, do you think that we're going to see more arrests in this case, uh, or are they going to kind of just go one by one with this family, maybe call it quits on Donna? I don't know. Do, do you think that, that there's more to be uh, looked at here with maybe everyone ending up behind bars in some sort of capacity uh, on this conspiracy? Well, now that Donna, the mother, uh, was arrested as she was trying to jump a flight to Dubai, yes. um, you know, uh, she's going to be at a crossroads. So she's going to have to decide, hey, do I spill my guts to, to law enforcement and cooperate and implicate everybody who may have had some involvement? Or do I do I, um, you know, uh, stay tight lipped and just try to write out my defense as best I can? You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Donna feels like, hey, gosh, any involvement I had was peripheral. I shouldn't be caught up in this. The, the best way that I can get out of this is by telling 
everything I know. And, and oftentimes that implicates other people in this sort of radius uh, of, of this horrible homicide uh, and, and could lead to future arrests. Are you surprised at all that her husband has not been arrested yet? I mean, he was right there with her trying to jump that flight to Dubai. Uh, or does this more so stand on the fact that the conversations in which Donna had with Charlie uh, and, and her being the one that's mainly speaking, her being the one that's kind of putting things out there that look extremely questionable as to her innocence. And because he is, has been very vocal, just kind of the guy in the background that's, I'm, I'm going on the flight. Uh, but he was there. I would, I would be hard to imagine him not having knowledge of whatever Donna has knowledge of. Uh, why is he still free? Or is this something where they're like, well, well we're, we're going to watch you for a little while and let you hang yourself too. Yeah, you know, I, I think that might be the route that it's going. I, I think, like you said, Donna had had more direct involvement in those conversations. You know, this is a thanks she gets for being an involved mother is is what uh, is what she might try to try to say. But um, uh, but I think what happened is is those conversations that involvement gave uh, law enforcement enough grounds to go after her first. Now that they're on her, they're going to do future follow-up investigation. Perhaps they um, uh, seize certain devices and subpoena text messages and emails and stuff like that. And, and that's when things really get going. More people start to get implicated. And, and um, her husband was, like you said, was, it appears, allegedly was right there with her, probably had knowledge of some nefarious activities. Now, does simply having knowledge of a crime make you guilty of something? Eh, it's, it depends on the circumstances. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, but I think the husband is at least a little more protected. But, uh, you know, how protected? That remains to be seen. Do you think they're keeping an eye on Wendy behind the scenes? Like if she went to, went and got her airline tickets and wanted to go to Dubai or another country that she can't be extradited from, would she be stopped at the airport before getting there? Or is now a good time to get some airline tickets and rack up some miles? I think the nature of the uh, underlying case against Charlie shows us that there had to be coordination. It wasn't just Charlie involved. There were other actors who who, who played a role in, in what happened. And so, um, you know, I don't think it's going to be limited to just Charlie and the mother Donna. Um, and I think law enforcement would be prudent to to keep a close eye on everybody within this circle, especially Wendy. Um, and so she's going to have to mind her P's and Q's. I have no idea what involvement, if any, she may have had. Yeah. Uh, but you better believe that, that they ought to be watching her closely.